Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and I just got back to the UK, so I figured I'd do a, well, try to do a simple video about the Ryzen 3000 series memory system, which is actually kind of not simple because the memory system on these is a mess. Um, it's, it's worse than, well, I like to refer to Intel's mesh as a mess because it's high latency compared to what Intel normally has, but, well, it, it doesn't even begin to compare what AMD's managed to cook up, so... Here's the Ryzen 3000 memory system. So this right here is our CPU. Um, depending on what CPU you have, it'll actually look a little bit different. If you have like a, if you have a 3900X, it'll look something like this. If you have a 3700X, this part doesn't exist. If you have a 3800X, it doesn't exist. If you have a 3600, that doesn't exist. 3600X, that doesn't exist, right? So anyway, um, so we have our CPU. And in our CPU, we have basically a bunch of... Uh, little like uh dies making up the actual cpu so the biggest one is the io die and then we have two other uh, well in this one we have two other dies because i decided to go with like the largest possible configuration but um if you have a 3700x or 3800x well this die doesn't exist so that right there is the uh that right there is the well actually i want to circle that there so that there is a CCD, which is, I think, core cluster die, or it might be compute cluster die. I don't really care. Both of them abbreviate to CCD, and ultimately AMD only makes core, like, core dies right now. They don't make, like, GPU dies yet. Um, well, not like this. They make GPUs, but not like this, okay? So not, not, for, not for Ryzen 3rd gen. Um, so anyway, we have the core cluster die, and within the core cluster die, we have, uh, like, as you can see, I drew it split because you actually have CCXs inside the core cluster die. Um, and the reason why that's important is that while a CCD is eight cores total, um, a CCX is four cores uh, plus 16 megabytes of L3 cache. And that L, uh, that's not MB, uh, 16 megabytes of L3. And the reason why this is important is because the CCXs cannot communicate directly. So if we have uh you know a core in ccx1 or 0 right so from ccx0 core 0 from ccx0 wants to talk to core 7 in ccx1 uh, uh this is awkward i should just call them one <laughs> anyway this is what i get for trying to use the proper numbering scheme but you know we we want to talk to ccx uh core 7 in ccx uh uh 1 um, the actual core zero will ha have to access it through the infinity fabric right here, which is what those red links are. So that's our infinity fabric. Um, and that infinity fabric also, which I've just realized I should have drawn it out like this. Well, bleh. this makes far more sense. Well, it also, because the thing is, it also connects like that. Like it's all interconnected. That's why it's called a fabric and not a ri like a ring or something right like um, it's kind of like a mesh <laughs> so um yeah so we have the infinity fabric right and that just kind of connects all of the ccx's and the io die and the ccd's and just kind of everything um so yeah that's that's the infinity fabric and the idea is basically um so all the four cores within a ccx they can talk to each other just fine so like zero to two um, or, well, 0 to 2 would be like there. That would be very fast. 0 to 1 would be very fast. 0 to 3 would be very fast because they're within the same CCX. They share all of their L3 cache. But if you want to uh, talk to, like, Core 7 from Core 0, then, you know, you have to go through the Infinity Fabric. If you want to talk to Core, let's say, 15 over here, you again have to go through the Infinity Fabric, right? Um, now, the cool thing is, is actually the latency going from like core 0 to core 15 or core 0 to core 7 is actually exactly the same the whole time because you're just going over the infinity fabric. And the way it's designed is the latency across the infinity fabric is pretty much the same to any core. So that's kind of neat. Um, so, you know, CCX to CCX latency is actually not that bad. CCD to CCD, well, CCX to CCX latency is the same as CCD to CCD license, uh, latency because everything has to go through the IO die as soon as you're not going into the same CCX. So that's, that's kind of part of the memory system. Now, 
Um, the Infinity Fabric not only connects all of the CCDs and the C well, all of the CCXs, it also connects them to the actual memory controller, which is this block right here. It's not actually that big in reality, I've just made it really big so that it's visible. Um, and that's called the Unified Memory Controller. It's called the Unified Memory Controller and not the Integrated Memory Controller because, well, the cores aren't integrated with the memory controller, they're separate, right? Like this was one die and this is another die, therefore they're not integrated and it has to have a new special name. So the new special name is Unified because uh, any core has the same memory access as any other core, so they're all Unified Memory Access. Um, so it's called the Unified Memory Controller, it comes with, uh, well, yeah, it can have a variety of configurations, right? If you're looking like at a at a Epic ROM platform, then the UMC is very different from what you get on a, a Ryzen third gen AM4 CPU, um, AM4 socket CPU. But for for our purposes here, the UMC has two memory channels, so you'll have like channel one, and you'll have like channel two, and then you'll have a bunch of memory sticks at the end of each channel. So that's kind of that, right? You'll just have RAM. Um, now, each channel is a 64-bit memory interface, but that's just, like, that's standard DDR4 memory things, so that's nothing special from AMD. Uh, you do want to, like, if you want optimal memory performance, you always want to be using two memory channels. Um, so, like, you know, if, if you're choosing between, like, 1x16 uh, versus, say, 2x8, this is roughly twice as fast. For the same, if if the memory timings are the same and the frequency is the same, 2 by 8 is about twice as fast as 1 by 16 because you're going to be using two 64-bit wide memory channels instead of one 64-bit wide memory channel, right? Pretty simple. Now, obviously, I understand some people, you might be like, but I want, to, like, you know, I'm, I'm a budget build, 1 by 8. I wouldn't, like, I'd, I'd push you towards 2 by 4 because you can always upgrade to 4 by 4 eventually. Um, but, yeah, so... Like, because this is faster again. Like, ultimate, like, if you have two memory channels, they're just faster than one memory channel. It's it's pretty simple. Um, uh, yeah, like, I, I can understand that, you know, if, if you have plans to upgrade up to 16 gigs from 8 gigs and you're not going to wait that long, then it might make sense to have one memory channel only. But it, it does, like, it basically cuts your memory bandwidth in half doing that does. So do keep that in mind. So... Anyway, that's kind of all of the different parts, and all of the different parts here have a bunch of different clocks. So the RAM uh, runs at uh, MCLK, um, and MCLK is, uh, funnily enough, uh, half your DDR speed. So um, let's do this. MCLK equals uh, DDR4, because basically if you have... Uh, like if you have a DDR4 4000 rated memory kit, uh, memory kit, it runs at 2000 megahertz and 4000 mega ticks. Now the issue is I like people, including me, call DDR4 4000 4000 megahertz. It's just a thing that basically everybody does. It's technically incorrect. We should be saying 4000 mega ticks, but per second. But nobody does that, so yeah. But the MCLK, the actual clock that the memory is running at, is going to be your DDR4 speed divided by 2. So if you buy a DDR4 4000 memory kit, your MCLK is 2000. Now the UMC has its own clock, and that's called the UCLK. Why does the memory controller have a, its own clock? Why isn't it just tied to MCLK? Well, it turns out it just can't do high clock speeds. So uh, if you exceed, um, you know, basically if you exceed... Well, if you're overclocking, you can overclock the UCLK past, like, you can force it to run higher clock speeds. But generally, um, the, the UCLK has either a one-to-one, -one, so the UCLK will either be one-to-one -to, -one to MCLK, or it'll be two-to-one with uh, UCLK. So, you know, if you buy a DDR4 3600, mem uh, 3600 megahertz memory kit, your MCLK is going to be 3600 divided by 2, which is 1800. Uh, 1800 will default to one-to-one -one mode. So you're still going to get 1800 megahertz UCLK. But if you buy something like, say, a DDR 4400 megahertz kit, your MCLK would be 2200, but your UCLK can't actually run that. So it'll go to two to one mode and you'll get 1100 megahertz UCLK. Um, so that's kind of that. So that's why that memory ratio exists. I'm not sure if it inherently causes, like, if one to one mode and two to one mode inherently have a performance difference between them. I've not tested that. Theor I would assume they do, 
but I've not actually tested that. So I'm not a hundred, like I can't say for sure that there is a performance difference between two to one and one to one. Um, but what I can definitely tell you is that if your UCLK is not equal to FCLK, you get a big, uh, you get a pretty big latency hit, um, which pretty much negates any gains past, uh, well, whatever your FCLK tops out at. Um, so UCLK and FCLK, ideally you want to run them equal to each other. But if your memory is very, very, if your memory is slow, um, then there's a relationship that you need to remember where FCLK, um, which I should just put that off off to the side somewhere, um, because the thing is the FCLK actually like overclocks everything. Well, like overclocks, you know, the communication between all of the cores, uh, well, between all of the CCXs. Um, it overclocks the communication from the CCXs to the memory controller. So basically, the, the issue is, if your FCLK is not equal to your UCLK, which I don't know why I put that equal sign there, it doesn't need to be there, but because you can run FCLK at whatever you feel like. But the thing is, if your FCLK is different from your UCLK, there is a latency penalty because data will be arriving in and out of the memory controller out of sync with when the Infinity Fabric can actually move it. So, um, you know you'll basically like data will turn up and then you'll have to wait maybe like a full clock cycle of FCLK before you can actually do anything with it because it arrived mid cycle or something, right? So basically having a uh, mismatch between the FCLK and UCLK causes a performance, uh, causes a latency hit. Now, funnily enough, uh, if you are running slow enough memory and your UCLK is really slow, then it's just better to run really high FCLK. So for example, and this is true of say in two to one mode. So if you had like a 4,400 megahertz kit, right? So we say uh, MCLK 2200, um, 1100 UCLK because we can't run 2200 UCLK. Um, and then you ran 1100 FCLK. This is really slow because now you've basically like the, the communication from the CCXs to the memory controller is slow. From the CCXs to other CCXs, it's also slow. And your overall performance at 1100 FCLK is just going to suck. It doesn't really matter that you have 4400 megahertz memory, your FCLK is really slow. So in this scenario, you don't actually want to have them equal to each other. You'd want to run like 1800, like whatever, F like the highest FCLK you can do. Generally speaking, the CPUs will be hitting somewhere between 1766 and 1900 megahertz FCLK. Really good CPUs do 1900, crap CPUs do 1766. So that's kind of kind of what to keep in mind in there. Now, there's a uh, interesting now, you know, as I just said, if your F, if your UCLK is lower than a certain level, you actually want to run higher FCLK. You don't want to run them in sync because just under like overclocking the FCLK alone turns into performance gains if you overclock it enough. Um, unfortunately, the FCLK does top out at only 1900 megahertz. I really, like, I, I, I'd be very interested to see what happens if you get the FCLK doing like three gigahertz or something, because like, it, it could be really impressive. Unfortunately, FCLK doesn't do that. So we're kind of stuck with, you know, up to 1900. But even then there's a relationship that's worth remembering, which is FCLK, minus UCLK greater than 150, well, 166. Okay, and the reason why you should keep this in mind is basically if your UCLK is really, really low, or, well, no, let's say your CPU can do, I don't know, 1833, okay? It can do 1833 FCLK. And you bought a memory kit that can't go past 3000 megahertz, right? Like you buy a DDR4 3000 megahertz memory kit. It's trash. It doesn't overclock. It only does 3000. Those exist. Trust me, those exist. Um, you can buy 3000 megahertz memory kits that will not overclock past 3000 megahertz by a single megahertz. The, the, those are a thing. Um, they're relatively rare, but they do exist. So you buy a 3000 megahertz memory kit that just doesn't overclock at all. Well, your UCLK is going to be 1500, right? And if our CPU can do 1833, well, 1833 uh, minus 1500 is, you know, equal to uh, 200, or no, that's like 333. So in this scenario, right, because we have a 333 me uh, megahertz FCLK advantage, over the UCLK, we should just run 1833 anyway and ignore, like, because you'll just get performance from the fact 
that the in, like the CCXs are communicating to each other faster. And also, like, the FCLK is now moving data to and from the memory controller faster, even though, you know, sometimes it has, like, stalls out at the memory controller. Um, higher FCLK is just more better. Unless, like, the, the worst case scenario for your FCLK is, like, um, if you're running, like, 1800 UCLK and 1833 FCLK. That's, that's really bad. Like, having a mismatch like that, that's really bad. Doing something like 1866 FCLK is actually still pretty bad. It, it gets better the more FCLK you get above your UCLK. But um, yeah, generally speaking, you don't want to like th this rule works really well. Like I've actually tested it that that works really well. So that's that. And so the general rule of th like and if you don't want to worry about all of this, you should just buy a 3600 megahertz rated memory kit set enable your XMP and, and just don't touch anything at that point. Um, if you do want to mess with all of this, then, uh, yeah, remember this rule, right? It, it Like, you know, if your memory kit does, if you, you're doing 1766, and the most your CPU can do is 1833, just run it 1766 on both, okay? Um, and 1766 is like 353 is uh, DDR4 uh, 3533. Okay, in case you were wondering. Um, so yeah, if your memory overclocks to something like that and your FCLK doesn't go past 1833 stable, then you want to run uh, DDR4 in sync with your... Like, you want to run your FCLK and UCLK in sync and, of course, use the one-to-one -one ratio. Um, you can also force the one-to-one -one ratio all the way up to, like, 3800 megahertz. There might be some exceptional CPUs that do it all the way up to 30, uh, 3866. I have not seen one yet. Um, so that's kind of that. Um that's kind of that with the, the, the frequency ranges. Now, what's worth noting, uh, the FCLK will get less and less stable the more data you run through it and also as it gets hotter. So if you, like basically you can stress test, uh, when you're stress testing, you will find that, you know, if you run like a memory stability test, it'll stress test, say, from the, the UMC to the memory sticks, you'll stress test this portion of the system really well but you won't necessarily stress test the FCLK very well. So if you run something like a, you know, a high core count memory intensive workload, like say video encoding, um, after like you run mem test, right? You run mem test, which is basically, it's not very heavy. It doesn't put a ton of strain on the memory, uh, on the CPUs. It puts a lot of strain on the memory stakes and the memory controller, not really on the CPU. Um, so you run memtest, you pass without any errors, but then you try to encode a video. And when you encode a video, it puts a ton of stress both on the entire like sort of DDR system, but it also puts a lot of stress on the F uh, on the Infinity Fabric because there's a bunch of core-to-core -core communication happening. Um, and actually, like the cores are just pulling in tons and tons of data. So if you're pushing a ton of data through the Infinity Fabric, it'll actually show up as, in, uh, and if it was unstable, that's when it'll show up. Um, cause you can have like, you can potentially boot 1900 quite easily and then not necessarily be able to pass stability tests with it. So that's something to keep in mind. You can't just run like a memory stability test and go like, yeah, the, the infinity fabric is stable cause that doesn't work. You haven't put enough stress on the infinity fabric doing just a memory test. So yeah, um, that's kind of that you, you do have to sort of like, you basically have to stress test everything if you're going to be messing around with this. So, yeah, that is the Ryzen 3rd uh, Gen AM4 memory system. Obviously, on, you know, like, the UMC can get bigger. There, There's going to be a quad channel. Actually, there's an octa-channel version of the of the unified memory controller, so and I assume there's going to be a quad-channel, uh, either quad-channel enabled or quad-channel straight-up uh, UMC as well. So, yeah, um... Uh, that that's kind of the memory system is like that's what all of your different clocks refer to. So FCLK is Infinity Fabric, UCLK is U Unified Memory Controller, MCLK is the memory, the actual RAM, um, and uh, yeah. Hope hopefully this was somewhat useful. Um, thank and yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. 
Uh, there's also uh, a bunch of AHOC merch on Teespring. You can find links to both down in the description below. Patreon is basically for people who don't want to buy any, you know, Teespring merch. And uh, Teespring is for people who don't want to, like, like, who want to buy something. There. It's really that simple. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. And goodbye.